Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that is hyped for Godzilla vs. Kong vs. Wayne. Wait, what? I keep reaching for greatness because I'm built from it. Damn, this is gonna be a fire sequel. I just hope they stop using that rap rock dumpster fire for music. Haven't these people watched enough Dragon Ball AMVs to know that the one true fight song is Numb by Linkin Park? I mean, come on. All right, let's start with some hot takes. Belated happy birthday to the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Eat it, Tampa. The internet celebrated MJ's birthday the only way they know how, by posting highlights, making memes, insulting LeBron, and complaining about the restock of Air Jordans on Sneakers app. In other words, it's like every other year. Anyways, here's to another trip around the sun, sir. Thanks for your contributions to the game of basketball, the sneaker game, and really the culture. Hopefully you haven't been checking out what's going on with your son Marcus and his trophy room store these days. I'm just gonna be here watching my vlog of your house, which is only like the most popular video on the internet ever, obviously. Stephen A. Smith got on my nerves after he disrespected my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers this past week. My first reaction after hearing about Anthony Davis aggravating his uh, right Achilles is that the Brooklyn Nets are gonna win the NBA championship. How dare you, sir? How dare you, sir? I don't even know what to think right now. Get off the weed, Stephen A. Smith. My 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers are gonna be just fine. Thank you very much. LeBron James is gonna average 50 points. Anthony Davis is gonna come back and win the MVP. We're gonna trade Kuzma for player 99 on the Chicago Bulls in those old EA sports games. And we're gonna sweep everybody in the West and destroy Brooklyn in the finals. And that's what I would say to Stephen A. where he watching this and he knew who I was. Man's probably busy with like 10 other shows on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN+. Plus, ESPN Podcast, The Corpse of Grantland, and The Ocho. I'll guest host on one of those shows. Stephen A, call me when Max Kellerman wants to take a day off and we can get to yelling at each other. That could be fun. Congratulations to the other goat, Alex Caruso. According to Nick DiPaola, he is now the face and feet of Anta after signing a multi-year deal with the Chinese brand. For now, he'll be rocking the KT Light 4, but I'm sure he'll be getting his own signature shoe soon enough and replace Klay Thompson as their top star. Okay, I'm only kidding. Calm down, Clay fans. I'm a big China Clay guy myself, but China Caruso? That's gonna be a big deal once we get the GOAT over there. They'll probably share top billing at the very least. Nintendo had their big direct show for the first time in over a year, announcing games that will drop in the next few months. We got a number of surprises like Fall Guys coming to the Switch, a new Star Wars game that might be a Fortnite clone, and a retro of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, AKA the game that was so, uh, they made Breath of the Wild so everybody forgot it existed. But for me, it was the reveal of Mario Golf Super Rush that was a showstopper. Not because it's the simulation golf game of my dreams, but because it's the direct opposite of that. And finally, we're getting a fashion upgrade from Mario and the crew. We've got the brothers Mario and Luigi in white pants, Princess Daisy looking like Jin Yonko or Michelle Wee and Wario. Well, Wario is a whole vibe, as the kids say. My man is like a mix of Anthony Kim, Chichi Rodriguez, John Daly, and uh, I mean, really more John Daly. And speaking of fashion, this TikTok video had me in stitches. Not because it was funny, but because it was so wrong. Like, nobody dressed like this in 99. Whoever put this together probably watched like a Jodeci music video when YouTube clips from a different world and poetic justice. Shout out to Lisa Bonet and Janet Jackson, respectively. And look, I'm not saying I would do better if I made a video of how teenagers dress today. My frame of reference would be like a Migos music video, Jonah Hill's Instagram, and a teal diamond stapled on my eyelid like Lil Uzi Vert. After Zack Snyder got We Live in a Society trending again thanks to his Justice League trailer, Disney one-upped him when they revealed their upcoming Cruella DeVille reboot starring noted Asian American actor Emma Stone. Yeah, I know she's apologized for it, but it's still funny. Anyways, we won't really know how gritty this movie actually is, but it's Disney, so I doubt we're gonna get anything close to what happened to Robert De Niro and Joker. But now, I want more grimy origin stories of classic Disney characters. Like, was Iago actually a man who crossed Jafar and was cursed to become a bird? Can we get a full history of the Nick's suffering in soul? Is Maleficent actually a hero? Oh, wait, I actually did that already. Look, I think we can all agree that punk kid Sid from Toy Story is the worst Disney villain. I'm not sure if we need a redemption story for him explaining that he was just misunderstood. Give me Pocahontas slapping John Smith around and calling him colonizer like Shuri does to the one white guy in Black Panther any day of the week though. 
Oh, and since we're on the topic of Marvel, heads up if you're watching episode seven of WandaVision after this. There is a mid credit scene in this one. I've wasted at least a half an hour of my life waiting for something to happen during these credit sequences, and just when I thought I was ready to just skip it and turn off my TV, boom, there's a surprise, like in every MCU movie. Don't play with my emotions like that. Look, you already got me on the hook for like 30 other movies and 20 more shows on Disney+, Plus, and that's barely an exaggeration. Big congratulations to Fernando Tatis Jr. for securing the bag this week. He signed a 14-year deal with the San Diego Padres worth $340 million. 14 years in San Diego. Man, what a bummer. He's going to have to spend over the next decade in a city with beautiful weather and, well, beautiful weather. Can't take that for granted these days. Sure, as a Los Angeles native, I would have preferred he signed with the reigning and defending World Series champion Los Angeles Dodgers or even the Los Angeles adjacent Angels, but it's fine. Tatis has broken through the baseball world in a major way, putting up eye-popping stats after only what amounts to a half a season in 2019 and because of pandemic reasons, a third of a season in 2020. He's not the highest paid player in the game. That title belongs to his California neighbors, Mookie Betts of the Dodgers and Mike Trout of the Angels. But the difference is that Tatis signed his deal five years earlier than those two. But unlike Betts and Trout, Tatis brings something else to the table besides numbers that are the thirst traps at the stat boys, attention. It's no surprise that we don't talk about baseball all that much on hard pass. I don't follow the sport the same way that I do basketball, football, or golf. I follow sports with predetermined outcomes like pro wrestling and Mortal Kombat more than I do baseball. I'm sure baseball today has a ton of fun players to watch and are filled with colorful personalities, but they haven't broken through for me in a long time. And when we do talk about baseball, it's usually centered around one person, Ken Griffey Jr. Okay, that's a lie. We may have also talked about Alex Rodriguez, but that's mostly because of Jennifer Lopez, that lucky bastard. Anyways, even after all these years, in my opinion, King Griffey Jr. is still the standard. I'm not gonna say he's the best player of a generation because again, I don't know baseball numbers, but I can't think of anybody who has a higher approval rating than Junior. He had that megawatt smile, the showmanship, the highlights, and the sweetest swing you ever did see. That thing is so pretty, it even looks good on the golf course. And of course, he had the sneakers, and he had the commercials. Who could forget the Griffey for President campaign in 1996, or when he chased the home run shot by Don Manley across the country? He was the cover athlete for a Nintendo 64 baseball game in a time when Nintendo actually made real sports games. He made sure Sammy Sosa couldn't get his bottle of Pepsi. Junior was special, and based on how people talk about this new Junior, he is bringing that same energy, but with more bat flips. He certainly seems to have the olds all worked up if this Adidas commercial was anything to go by. Tatis Jr. This is one of baseball's most exciting players right now. Okay, here we go again. This Tatis fella is making a mockery of the game. Kiss that ball goodbye. Look at him flip the bat again. Flipping the bat? Who does he think he is? He's a hot dog. That's right, Tatis is an Adidas guy. He's also a Gatorade Bolt 24 guy, a Hyper Ice guy, and a Mizuno guy. But let's focus on the Adidas part. A few weeks ago, we talked about how the Three Stripes have a gold mine named Patrick Mahomes. What I did not realize until like a few days before we had to record this is that they also have another ace in Tatis. According to Forbes, he's the most searched player in the game and his jersey sales are only behind Mookie Betts, Aaron Judge, and Bryce Harper, guys who have been around longer and play for the biggest TV markets. But what they lack is the charisma that Tatis appears to be oozing with. Look, at the end of the day, Adidas did not waste time in getting Damian Lillard a signature shoe. Dame is getting MVP buzz right now for his clutch performances, but unless he leads Portland to a ring, he's always going to be in the shadow of LeBron, KD, Steph, Kawhi, Harden, and really even Kyrie. If Mahomes took a step back after losing to Tampa, I doubt he's in the backseat for long. Tatis is already the face of a new generation of baseball players who grew up in the TikTok era. So, this past weekend, Nike brought back the Nike Air Griffey Max 1 in its freshwater colorway for the 25th anniversary. It's an iconic shoe from an era when the competition was fierce. There was even a follow-up that I think doesn't get enough love these days. Adidas cannot boast having a baseball cleat or trainer that even comes close to the stature of the Griffeys. But just like with all signature shoes, it's not just how the shoe looks and performs. It's also about the player that's wearing them. Tatis and Mahomes, in the short time that they've been around, are already checking off the player part. Now they just need the shoes. I'm just saying, Adidas, I know you guys have big plans for your two superstars, or at least I like to believe you have big plans. I just wish you would let us in on what you've got planned sooner rather than later.
Yo, it's the Heat Check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. First up, we have the Nike Zoom Freak 2 Taxi. These are on the 25th for 120. Based on the story of Giannis sending so much money back to his family in Greece during his rookie season that he didn't have enough cash for the taxi ride back to the Bucks Arena, it's a very cool concept come to life. Although, if you think about it, man, 2013 was a very different time, even though it was only eight years ago. Giannis wasn't a household name. He had to send money through Western Union instead of like a payment app on his phone, and ride sharing was wasn't a big thing back then. Who knew life was gonna be so much simpler back then? Then we have the Nike Dunk High Football Gray on the 25th for 110. Still have no idea what football gray means, although I might have an idea for what color my walls will be when we get around to remodeling this studio. We have the Nike Dunk High Vast Gray on the 25th for 110. Okay, okay, I now have two ideas for wall colors. Then we have the Nike Air Vapor Max Evo Collector's Closet on the 25th for 200. The Vapor Max Evo on its own already feels like a mashup of past Air Maxes, but this new colorway goes for it all with prints and color patterns that feel like a history of the Air Max from its beginning all the way to the modern era. Then we have the Jordan MA2 Future Beginnings on the 25th for 150. People don't want to say it out loud, but Jordan brand has been on a roll when it comes to their lifestyle offerings the past few years. But then again, I couldn't care less for the hype. Just keep these new silhouettes with the retro vibes coming and I'll keep buying them when they drop in price and end up at outlets. Well, when I'm comfortable enough to go inside of an outlet again. Then we have the Nike Cosmic Unity. This is the green glow colorway on the 26th for 150. What do you mean these don't glow in the dark? It's right there in the name, Ah. Then we have the Nike Kyrie 7 Chinese New Year on the 27th for 140. The Lunar New Year celebration has passed, but sneaker brands are continuing on with their CNY offerings with this new Kyrie colorway that features a Chinese knot that symbolizes unity layered in with a Nike swoosh. We have the ready-made Nike Blazer Mid on the 27th for 160. Okay, so at first glance, it reminds me of a sweater that got left in the washing machine too long, but the warped look is actually a part of the design by Yuta Hosokawa and his ready-made label. The worn-in look is also purposeful as it uses 15% Nike grind rubber. Then we have the Air Jordan 4 Taupe Haze. This is on the 27th for 200. Admit it, you're kind of hoping these have like some Cactus Jack branding or something, right? It just looks like something I would imagine Travis Scott would rock if he wasn't busy flexing his fragment ones that have his reverse swoosh calling card. And then my pick of the week is the Nike LeBron 7 Dodgers on the 23rd for 200. Remember when LeBron wore this in the NBA bubble and we thought this was like some sort of elaborate troll on the Clippers? Yeah, I like that story better, but it is paying homage to the other world champs here in this city, so I really can't hate that much. And now for the heat check on the sneakers app. Yes, again, this past Thursday, we got three hyped pairs of Nike Dunk Lows dropping on the same day. I shouldn't even say hyped anymore. It's just accepted that dunks are what the people want, no matter the colorway or size range. Dudes are gonna size up buying the Coast colorway and ladies are going to size down to get the Hyper Cobalt Medium Gray. But it didn't really matter because surprise, it was a parade of L's. Social media was just flooded with all the L's and we got to even more L's in the form of Stussy Hirachis on the same day. Now, we should all know the cycle by now. People share their wins and losses on Twitter, claim they're going to delete the app or quit buying sneakers all together, but then they are back at it the following week. I can already see the tweets for everybody who's going to miss out on the football gray and bass gray dunk highs in my mind, and it's not pretty, but there seems to be more outrage this time. I think some of it has to do with so many people stuck at home and not willing or able to get out to a store, so there are more people on the app. Now, you're probably thinking, don't be naive, Jacques. Everybody has multiple phones and bots on top of having connected stores. First of all, no. Stop projecting your own hustle onto everybody else. Believe it or not, there are people who have just one phone and one sneakers account, and if they take the L, that's it. They don't have backups or bots or connects, and well, they're not having it anymore. I'm not sure if it will go anywhere, but even people who I follow that normally don't say much and take their L's on the chin without complaining are also now speaking up. Again, it's not really a significant number of people, but at some point it becomes significant, right? Nike probably has somebody following all of these complaints and maybe they're waiting for a certain threshold to cross before they release a public, we hear you and we will do better statement. And despite claims to the contrary, I don't think higher ups at the company are enjoying all of these L's that they're giving to satisfy consumers. But what I do think is that it hasn't hit a critical mass. When will we know a critical mass has hit? When you see the sneakers app updates to X.0 and the interface is different, the process is different, and you can check out with ease. Until then, keep letting them know. I'm giving the sneakers app a paltry two out of 10. Why not zero? At least they have the decency to let me know I didn't get them. It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. 
Like Meek Mill's beef with Takashi 69, AKA the beef I couldn't possibly give two shits about. I don't know what they're beefing over, who started it, and why people I know and respect continue to give it attention. But man, stop talking about it. Every possible permutation of 69 is already muted on my Twitter, but that doesn't stop it from showing up on trending topics, nor does it stop people on my timeline from referencing it. And I get it. Someone's gonna say, well, Jacques, if you don't care, then why are you talking about it? I'll say it right now, in the nearly two years we've been doing hard paths, 6 9 has only been mentioned twice on the show. Once in a bit about George Clooney and the other time was in a clip we played of 2 Chains talking about rats in Peter Rosenberg's house. They were both tangential mentions people, so yeah, we really don't care. Do your job, Twitter. Anyways, this week's hard pass goes to people who remember the good old days of camping out for sneakers. Ah, yes. In the pre-pandemic, pre-sneaker app times, old sneakerheads love to regale you with tales of sitting in lines during the freezing cold of winter or in the blazing hot of summer in order to pick up the latest hot pair of kicks. It was a peaceful time, as they are fond of saying, where lasting bonds and friendships were made as everybody converged for their love of the sneaker game. To this day, you hear about that time they lined up for the Diamond Dunk Lows on the Brea or the Soul Collector Air Pity Pack in Las Vegas. If you're looking for a more recent example, just last year, Adidas drove around Chicago in Batmobile adjacent vehicles handing out Easy Quantums in the snow. Make no mistake about it, there is something pure and old school about getting hyped sneakers the old fashioned way and I am in no way doubting the relationships that were forged when people waited in line for hours to get the pair that they'd been dreaming about. I've done it too, so I'm not immune to it. There are times when I've had to get into a short media line to get into sneaker events and launches. When I started out at Kicks on Fire, I remember waiting in line to hopefully grab a pair of the Nike LeBron 8 Low Sprite at the Fox Hills Mall. Shout out to the fans who remember those days and the epic fits I used to wear for this weekly sneaker review. They were fire. And when I was younger, I got in line for the midnight launch of Halo 2. It may be a little more embarrassingly, I got in line for Star Wars The Phantom Menace. <clears throat> I'm batting 500 with pop culture. That's not bad. At least I didn't line up for like the second Matrix movie. My co-writer contends it was the only time he's ever wanted to walk out of a theater. There are kids then who are now old who have done it dozens if not hundreds of times who are waxing this nostalgia with rose-colored glasses. And I guarantee you, it wasn't always smooth sailings. I heard of stories of people being robbed, trampled, harassed, and worse in these lines. And we all know the stories of people fighting for releases that we would best describe as meh at best when tensions are high because they predicted resale value was going to peak at GameStop levels. And when the mainstream media gets wind of these stories, it's always covered the same way. Look at these kids fighting and killing each other over some shoes. And who do they always show in these fights? Black people, brown people. People who fit a certain stereotype. Never mind that sneaker and reseller culture spreads across people of all backgrounds. Go look at photos of the trading pit at SneakerCon, or check your Instagram for the kids who are stunting with trophy room ones that were backdoored, allegedly. It's a wide range of people, right? But that's not what we see in these sneaker line fights. <laughs> So let's stop with the hoping that buying sneakers will go back to the good old days. Like every other old generation versus young generation argument, the old heads need to get over themselves and the young generation needs to evolve from the olds and not repeat the same mistakes. So what we need to do is redirect our frustration at the gatekeepers and demand that they do better. First of all, why are we even allowing campouts and lines during a pandemic? I wouldn't do it for any pair of sneakers, no matter how hyped or how much I can resell it for. And I'm certainly not gonna do it while also risking getting the Rona. Second, and this goes back to the sneakers topic on the heat check, we have to demand that these brands improve the digital experiences so we don't have to force ourselves to do in-person stuff. I'm sure someday when COVID is over or is at least controlled to the point where it's not an everyday concern anymore, people can go back to lines. I personally will never do it again. But then again, that practice was never in my DNA. I blame Jar Jar and Darth Maul for ruining that part of my soul. Sorry. All right. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I'm Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before we celebrate the end of an era. That's right. DJ Khaled finally came up with a new catchphrase for his Jordan Care packages. Sometimes, you know, you have to be, you got to, you got to know. Sometimes you just got to know. Sometimes you have to know. Yeah, what he said. If you only knew what he knew, then... He wouldn't need to know that you know now he knew it, I think, or something. I'm just glad he's finding out of the meeting. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.